chapter 8. Before that, let's read Romans chapter 10, verse 4. He says that for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Christ is the end of the law. Why is Christ the end of the law? Because he fulfilled the law. So once Christ has come, there's no need for anybody to take any law and say that I have to obey it before I can make heaven. Until I'm able to obey the Ten Commandments, I can't call myself to be saved. Until I'm able to obey all the Ten Commandments, God cannot bless me. Until I'm able to obey certain rules, God cannot accept me. All those things were fulfilled in Christ Jesus. So all that a man need now is to believe in Jesus. That is why he said that Christ is the end of the law. For faith to every man that believes. He said that for righteousness to everyone that believes. He said that Christ is the end of the law. For righteousness to everyone that believes. So Christ ended the law. And now righteousness is not based on a man's ability to obey the law. Because Christ has obeyed the law on every man's be behalf. And now righteousness to everyone that believes. So now righteousness comes by believing. When you believe in Jesus Christ, then you are made righteous. Then you are made righteous, not based on anything you will do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you have done for us. Now let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 3 and 4. It is getting interesting. Now we have known that the law has been fulfilled in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ has fulfilled the law and he nailed it to the cross. Ephesians chapter 2, 14 and 15 said that he nailed his own right. Who wrote the law? It was Jesus Christ. God who wrote the law and he's nailed his own handwriting to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. So now the law doesn't have any right on the life of every believer. No believer needs to obey any Ten Commandments to be accepted of God. We are accepted of God based on what Jesus has done. Hallelujah. So now let's read Romans chapter 8 verse 3 to 4. He said that for what the law could not do, there were certain things the commandment, the Ten Commandments of Moses, its ordinance could not do. He said for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. Condemned sin in the flesh. Oh boy, this is so amazing. He said that for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. The law was weak. The law was based on man's flesh. Man's ability to perform through his flesh. And he's saying that the law, what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son, that is Jesus Christ, in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. Jesus came for sin. Condemned sin in the flesh. Jesus condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled, might be fulfilled where? In us. Jesus Christ, when we read Ephesians chapter 2, 14 to 15, said Jesus nailed the law to the cross, the, the, the righteous requirement of the law. He nailed them. And Romans chapter 10, verse 4, that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the law. For righteousness to everyone that believes. Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the law. He has fulfilled the law on any man's behalf. And now Romans chapter 8 verse 3 and 4 is saying that what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sent Jesus Christ in the likeness of sinful flesh to condemn sin in his flesh. That the righteousness of the law, the righteous requirement of the law will be fulfilled in us. Meaning that everyone that has believed in Jesus Christ has already fulfilled the law. Hello, beloved, I think you are still following. The righteous requirement of the law has been fulfilled in us. Why? Because Jesus Christ, who fulfilled the law, is now living in us. So we don't need to fulfill anything that has already been fulfilled in us. You don't need the law to be accepted of God. You don't need the law to be blessed of God. You don't need any principles and rules for God to uh, qualify you to become a citizen of heaven or become a child of God. The day you believe in Jesus Christ, the day you became a citizen of heaven. 
Corinthians, first Corinthians, uh, uh, Timothy chapter, uh, I think 2 verse 19, said that we are citizens of heaven waiting for our Savior to come out from heaven. That is Jesus Christ. We are citizens of heaven. We are not waiting to do or perform before we can become citizens of heaven or we die and become citizens of heaven. We are already from heaven. We are already children of God. The Bible says that as many as believe in Jesus, John chapter 1 verse 12, as many as believe in Jesus, to them God gave them power to become the children of God. So you become a child of God when you believe in Jesus Christ. So the day you believe in Jesus Christ, the day you became a child of God, the day you became a child of God is the day you were born from heaven. Is the day that your name is written in heaven. You are now in the kingdom of God. And you are no more looking for the kingdom of God. You are no more looking for a way to go to heaven. You are already part of heaven. You are just a citizen of heaven living on earth. And when you leave this earth, you are going back to where you come from. That is heaven. So stop telling people yourself or telling people that I'm in a church where I'm trying to obey the laws and the Ten Commandments and following this principle. I'm always going to church so that I will make heaven. If you are saying that, then probably you have not believed in Jesus Christ yet. And if you have believed in Jesus Christ, then I am telling you today, live in the simplicity of of the gospel, of the finished work of Jesus Christ, you are already a citizen of heaven. You are not looking for heaven. You are being born into heaven. You are part of the kingdom of God. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, he said that God has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness. The day you believe in Jesus Christ, God delivered you from the kingdom of darkness and brought you into the kingdom of his dear son. What is the kingdom of his dear son? The kingdom of God, dear son, is the kingdom of heaven. You are part and citizen and, and, and a bona fide property and belonging to heaven. Hallelujah. This is the simplicity of the God. If you understand the gospel in this light, you see, you, you begin to rest and thank God for what he has done. He has made you righteous without work. Yesterday, we looked at, at 